Alrighty, let's get through this without coughing. Let's do this. So looking at your email, you are talking about, <clears throat> I think my hands are still looking IK when they are planted on the table. Could you give feedback on those parts? For sure. Let me turn off the scrubbing. Oh, the scrub there. Let's see. That's a lovely accent you have. So you can. There's something also if you actually scrub fast through it. It seems like from here to around here-ish, um, you have a bit of a drift. Where look at the lines of the fingers, right? So if I go back, you can see when I scrub fast, it has a very very slow drift. That's a lovely accent you have going over there so you would have to stabilize that the thing about IK is that for instance during moments like here when you have <clears throat> the elbow moving down this way especially through here that's probably the biggest one because you have lots of small movement in the elbows <clears throat> and then this here but the big thing here is that the moment you have that amount of movement that's going to move the forearm the moment you have that moving and you see a break where this is not moving because of it, <coughs> meaning that the forearm, basically the hand is always going to track with the forearm. So unless you do very exaggerated waving where the hand is really dragging, the hand is pretty aligned to, um, to, to the forearm. Generally speaking, obviously you have some poses or things where it's going to be different. But when you have a hand planted on something and you have all this Oh, I can see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see anything here. Let's see this hand maybe. So when you do a lot of movement through here, and you can see if I just loosely hold onto this wrist and I do this, you can see how the wrist here, this guy, is moving with the forearm, right? There's always that forearm is pulling that hand with it. But if you try to lock this and do kind of a weird look like this, that's when it's going to feel <clears throat> broken and have this separation through here. So when you do something like this, take this drawings away here. When you do this big move here, you're gonna have here. To start here. <clears throat> it almost seems like he's moving over, especially because he lifts his hand here. There's going to be more pressure on this hand. So a this is going down in terms of the elbow goes down. It takes the forearm down with it, which is going to, to me, move up that wrist this way. And at the same time, you would flatten the wrist and spread out the fingers a bit more because there's pressure. This is planting more onto the table <clears throat> because of that move here. Not that he's fully resting on it because then it would be different and the shoulder goes up and it's a bit of a different lean like that on there. <clears throat> but you still want to have some, some movement in here when all of this moving, uh, when all of the forearm uh, section here is moving. That's going to influence the wrist for sure. So as it goes down, the wrist will go up a bit. The fingers can still track and <clears throat> stay on the surface because that's where the contact point is, but the stuff can still move. See, if I move my wrist, the fingers are still staying put there. Austria. Then another IK sign is that when everything is moving back in one straight line. Because it's IK, you're not going to have the arcs of FK joints. So that straight path back while all of this is moving and not affecting the wrist orientation and rotation, that's another sign, especially through here. You can see all of this. So during this move, think about what is he doing? Why is the wrist sliding forward? Would it still be planted? Are you just kind of, is the arm pushing away? I mean, you can play like that where this move is potentially him pushing away and then taking that arm back. That means that if this happens and he pushes, you could slide it forward, but then I would have to do some spreading of the fingers as well, a little bit, and then again, flattening a bit to, to show pressure on that, with a little bit more shoulder involvement. And then, through here, it's not too bad. The problem, it's, through here is that you have this very, very flat line where it's almost now <clears throat> the opposite that I would say, where you want to break the wrist orientation from the forearm, just because of gravity, this is going to, this is going to droop not that the wrist is this low down with the fingers down here but it's going to have still enough of a drag down <clears throat> that's my that's my hand and probably at this point what is he doing here goes back so then i will bring up that um so you will go up from here sorry it's a horrible drawing 
and that that elbow will go up higher so you don't have that flat perspective you don't you don't you don't really want to have an elbow that's flat towards camera it's either down or up to show the break in the in the arm so we know the shape of it like this if you squint especially through here it feels more like it's a very short arm versus that has a clear break there so just to go back as you go back here I would a relax the fingers and not have them so spread they will go back into more of a default relax mode so the, the index would go in these guys would kind of have less of a spread but relax and fold and rotate down but then at the same time the wrist would also because of gravity go down a bit so the whole thing will kind of relax more so <clears throat> the unnatural feel is that the wrist stays so straight with the forearm so that's one of those moments where I will break it where it's not aligned with the forearm it's aligned to me this way but not this way it would have to drag because of just gravity so there's you know there's always an exception to whatever rules I'm bringing up here which are not really rules um, <clears throat> and again like that <laughs> limb feel is nice but then it has a little bit of a weird feel with this gap here where you almost want to close in that thumb and See, to me it seems like you want your index to be a bit straighter where your your um your relaxed index <clears throat> you know it's your hands it's gonna be a horrible thing but <laughs> you have to go this way uh i wouldn't curve fingers all the same so i would might be pretty cliche but it would be this type of rotation where the index is mostly straight a little bit of a bend and everything kind of relaxes in the pinky and the ring finger area but the moment you have something like this it feels like a very distinct pose with that the character wants to hold and seeing this here gives it that weird claw-like feel something like a lego figurine wrist there but going back this is just for the hands so watch out with a straight path you want this to be always in an arc even if it's minimal but i would look at before you do any of this, you have to look at well, what are the mechanics? What are the body mechanics of this section? Again, is it just is it just him if he's sitting like this, moving over? Is it so it's just going to be the body doing this? So then you could raise the hand sooner because it's all in here in the chest, or is the hand pushing away for that lean, with the shoulder going up and really showing a flattening of the wrist and maybe a tightening like this, and then you bring the arm away? <clears throat> so you need to think about how you want to act this out. What your what your look is and the other thing that's a bit weird in this is even though this arm goes first so there is an offset <clears throat> overall it has that feeling of this and this moving together as one weird robotic wooden piece so what's his end pose here see with that lean here which i like <clears throat> you can easily just have this arm droop down off the table so when you do this that arm is still here so you just kind of just that arm goes back and it's just this and the other arm just kind of slides down off the table into this pose and you don't have to do this move over and then down because this is a weird mirrored um you know twin pose there i think not super twin because there's a change in posing but the overall feel feels too parented like it's too um so what i say is it moving as one like it's the chest and the arm are moving as as one big piece which gives it that that stiff feel <clears throat> that's a lovely accent you have and then speaking of stiff the weird thing at the end here <laughs> good day mate he says good day it's kind of like he kind of not that he yells it out but it's kind of good day mate like there's there's a bit more in the chest and right now in your animation it seems this is the broken the cutoff point that everything is in here all the animation is in here versus so you might go back go, ha, good day so you might have a bit of a neck out reach forward um, you know shoulder down maybe with a chest out a tightening of, of that arm and this because it's kind of good day so he kind of pushes himself forward so there's more involvement to me in everything in here and so it's not just located in his head so that just feels a bit too isolated there <laughs> good day, mate. yeah that section there that's a lovely accent you have that's not too bad. That's a lovely accent you have. It just seems That's a lovely accent. Once you get after, after this point here. Accent you have. A besides the jaw and the lip sync, I'm kinda of missing, but again I would 
but there's still some body mechanic stuff that I would look at before you go further into the lip sync. But the accent you have, well, accent you have, even on, on you have, you can have a little bit of a, an, uh, if you track the nose, little arc over and accent you have, you have just a little bit of something in there. And right now everything just kind of dies. The accent you have, just through the here, there's nothing going on except a little bit of a drift in here, which is again adds to that that stiffness. I don't feel like the the words are coming out of his his body and his mouth where however he says the words intensity how loud and how fast i don't see that replicated in the body meaning that if you yell your chest is going to you know whatever the acting is it's just going to the chest is going to react to the to a louder voice more than to a smaller voice and the way he has his that's a lovely accent that's a lovely accent you have like his little swarmy or potentially trying to be flirty um body language is not there it just all feels very stiff and empty. You have New Jersey. You have even this feels, even though the arm is going first, it still feels very pose to pose. Kind of going back into this, that feels pose to pose from here to here. <clears throat> you have New Jersey. Where you might anticipate this whole thing, where he's he's waiting and looking at her, and for me it would be a bit of, of a dart, and maybe looking up and down. And he's observing, he's thinking about, it, he's trying to figure this out, and he goes. New Jersey, so you could have a little moment of the hand going New Jersey, so hand first, maybe head tilt, and then he says it. So to me, there's still a lot more you can do acting wise to kind of push this. Right now, it just feels like the animation is waiting for the lip sync, and when the audio starts, then there's body movement to it. But it doesn't feel, I hate to say, it, it doesn't feel like the character is alive and thinking, which is super easy for me to say and always really hard to do. <coughs> but it does come across that way in this section. New Jersey. Even through here, New Jersey. It just kind of comes down. I do like how you have a bit of a change up in the shoulder and in the chest and in the head a bit. It's but it's very subtle. New Jersey. And it could just be New Jersey. A little bit of more of a little accent in the head. Austria. What? And this seems also a bit subdued. Austria. I do like his blink. Austria. Just watch out. You have a bit of a floaty eyebrow. Oh, they kind of float down. I would hold this. A little bit of maybe like again art, uh, like a little darting, and he's looking. What is she's going to say? Austria. And I think I would bring the blink down, maybe two frames later. It's just, Austria. it's pretty close to when she says it. To me, it seems like she would, she would say it, and until that hits his ears, and triggers that blink, where he goes, "Oh, I got new information. I got it now." He construct that whole information. Austria. That's why I, I would bring it in later. And then it would be, it could even be a bit of a, a look down. Austria, like it just, because he's not the smartest guy. So I think just that one word is going to trigger a lot of turning of wheels and a thought process in him because he's not that smart. Austria. Austria. And again, this seems just a bit too simple for him. Austria. Austria. <laughs> That's cute. I do like this though. That's cool. I like that. But then watch out. We're back into the category of a lot of movement there with the wrist kind of separated. Also watch out. We got the same thing here with the bend of the arms away from camera. So if you do your squint test or hit seven without lights in Maya, um, it will just be a very short arm versus potentially the arm just a bit lower. It has a bit of a forward um, forward and back slide right through there where I will plant those hands a bit more. You can have some movement in arms and even in the wrist a bit, but then uh, where is my hand? Like the fingers would kind of, you might go Austria, but then the fingertips would be locked. With that slidey hand, it feels a bit unfinished. Austria. <laughs> Austria. And this seems like a, a weird deliberate move back. Austria. But it's kind of Got to move my hand back, as opposed to let's see. Austria. He goes <laughs> Austria. Where it's, it's it to me, it almost seems like everything needs to be driven at this point. I'd say through his head, but it's it's all like oh oh Austria, and it's kind of it's almost like the head is leading the movement, and just the hands are kind of readjusting to his new head and head position, which then in turn affects the body position. If that makes sense, I don't know if that's very cryptic there, but. 
This just seems like a very separated, disjointed move. Austria. <laughs> well then, <laughs> good day, mate. But you are getting closer, and I'm just being extra picky because we're, we're getting into this, you know, towards the end field where I still, there's still stuff you can kind of push, the acting choices and kind of the body mechanics, just to give it just that extra layer of life. Um, and I don't want to just say, yeah, it looks good, just look at your arcs and watch your IK uh, arms and, and hands to kind of give it a layer of, here's the final technical polish. I, th I think we can still push this, and I think from where you started to where we are now, there's, there's a lot of progress, so I still think there's more in it. I think there's more that you can do, and I think you can you can do it. Um, but of course, it's totally up to you. I mean, you're the one you're the one doing the shot. You're the one paying. You can say no. I don't want to push this further. Just give me technical notes uh, and arcs, and then I would say, then look at your IK uh, hands, the way I uh, you know the fix that I mentioned, and start getting into the lip sync, and leave the body mechanics uh, in terms of acting the way it is. That's totally up to you. I would recommend to push it if you're going for a, a demo reel shot. Um, but I'm going to leave it at that. All right. Thank you. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.